What is up everyone? This is going to be a very special video because this is officially my 100th video. Kind of. This isn't my 100th video that I've ever made on YouTube. I'm not counting any video I made on my previous channel, so it's not technically my 100th video, but this is the 100th video on this channel, so it's close enough. Considering how infrequently I upload videos, I am kind of amazed that I managed to reach this milestone, but I did, so I'm going to celebrate. And to do so, I'm going to talk a little bit about how my channel's evolved, a little bit about why I started doing YouTube, talk about how my videos have evolved and progressed into what they are today, and a lot more about the future and where I'm planning on taking it in the future. Since it's the start of a new year, it's 2022, and this is my 100th video special, I have been doing a bit of soul searching and I have decided that I do kind of want to take my channel in a bit of a different direction. And so at the end of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about where I want to take this channel in the future. So I do strongly recommend staying until the end of this video to hear about it. Because I'm going to undergo some pretty massive changes on this channel. And I want you guys to kind of have the heads up so you can mentally prepare yourselves. But first off, I want to tap into a little bit about my origin. Because for those long-term subscribers who have watched my videos for a long time, a lot of you should know that this is not my first YouTube channel. The first YouTube channel I ever had I made when I was a young teenager, way back in late 2014, called Supersonic Cory. The name sounded like a good idea at the time. The reason why I started a YouTube channel was because over the span of 2013 and 2014, I had been exposed to critic YouTubers, specifically Chris Stockman, Jeremy Johns, and the most influential at the time, Sam's channel. I saw Sam's channel, and Sam was a guy who tackled geeky nerdy movies like superheroes, Marvel, DC, Star Wars, and I especially gravitated towards his Spider-Man reviews. It kind of opened my eyes a little bit. It kind of was the catalyst for me that helped me realize that film is an art form that a lot of people work together to actually make and it was his videos that helped me kind of start to develop my own critical thinking skills to learn to appreciate movies and why they are as good as they are as well as learning how to be more critical and accept when a movie could have been a lot better. I gravitated to the idea that he's sharing his opinions and what he thought about individual shows and movies and it inspired me to do the same thing. There was just one small little problem I had when I started out. I was 13 years old. I really liked the idea of sharing my own opinions on movies, and I started to try practicing my critical thinking skills, but the first couple of reviews I've ever done never made it onto YouTube, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I never officially finished editing those videos and I never saved them, so the files are long gone, there's no salvaging them, so I can't show you any of them, but I vividly remember them, so I can definitely talk to you about what my first unuploaded videos were really like. The first movie I ever attempted to review was Man of Steel. This was right when the movie came out and I saw it for the first time, and my original review was basically me rambling for 15 minutes. I wasn't even thinking about a background, I just sat on a chair in the middle of my bedroom and had my camera pointing at me and it was at a weird Dutch angle. It was a really weird camera angle. I just sat in the middle of the room and the wall was kind of like at an angle behind me. It was a complete mess. I can't remember exactly what I said but I do remember that the review was 15 minutes long and I claim to have liked the movie, but went on huge tangents about how thousands of people were probably killed by the end of the movie, and I don't know why it took me 15 minutes to say that in something that I can now say in one sentence. I ramble a lot. That's going to be a common theme in a lot of my videos. I also thought the movie was a little bit dull, and I thought that it was way way too long, and I thought it really really dragged at points, but I also said I really liked the action. In hindsight, I really, really don't like Man of Steel, but I can't really fully judge it because I honestly haven't seen Man of Steel since I watched it for that video that I made way back in 2014. The only other thing that I remember from that video was the Krypton joke, which at the time I thought it was hysterical. In the video I talked about how in Man of Steel you spent a lot more time on Krypton, 
which I thought I kind of liked because it means you kind of care about it a little bit more when it eventually explodes. In comparison to the Christopher Reeve movie where it's just kind of there just to blow up. And I made a joke that was basically something along the following. Alright, so we need kal and there he is, and we're sending him off into outer space. Now we need Krypton, there we go. Blow it up, Jimmy! Eight years. I have waited eight years to finally make that joke. And you know what? It wasn't even that funny. My second attempt at a movie review was done in pretty much the exact same style, with me sitting on my chair in the middle of the room, pointing it at a really weird, untidy angle, and it was a review for the movie Coraline to talk about why it was such a shit movie. Immediately, I bet you guys are going, Wait, you? Giving a negative review to Coraline? Isn't that one of the movies that you continuously praise as one of your all-time favourite movies? It certainly is, but it most definitely didn't start that way. The first time I saw the grand majority of Coraline, I ran into it on TV, and I was a complete wuss at the time because pretty much everything scared me, so whenever the movie got remotely creepy, I was continuously leaving the room. Which means that when I first did my original review, I had not seen Coraline in its entirety. I had only seen about 70 to 80% of it. The review was once again 15 minutes, and in summary, all I said was something I can now say in one sentence. Over the span of 15 minutes, all I basically said was that I had huge respect for it being a stop motion animated movie and how much work must have gone into the movie, but it was too scary for kids and therefore was a shit movie. Because that logic is flawless. And no, don't ask me why it took me 15 minutes to say something I can now say in one sentence. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I rambled a lot in my older videos and I still kind of do, but I'm trying to get better at it. However, my, at the time, backhanded compliment was something that always stuck with me after I said it, about how much work must have gone into the movie. So, curiosity got the better of me and I started watching behind the scenes material of it on YouTube and I got a much better look at how the movie was made and what was done to the stop motion of the movie. It really opened my eyes and I had much more respect for just how much effort went into this movie. It really opened my eyes and I really saw just how much effort went into the stop motion of the movie. So I decided to give it a second chance and I watched it again. This time I did watch it in its entirety and I fell in love with it. So I tried to make a written review. It was about four pages long and it was by far the most coherent and well put together review I'd ever done for a movie at that age. It had a great structure with an introduction talking about my personal history. I had a short summary of what the movie was about. It was split up into categories, story, characters, animation, etc, etc. And the only real problem I had with that original review was the fact that I referred to Dakota Fanning as the girl who played as Coraline because I did not know she was played by Dakota Fanning at the time and I couldn't be bothered spending the 10 seconds it would have taken for me to look it up. Because I was lazy. And after that came the real deal. Q August 5th 2014 when I officially upload my very first YouTube video. And it's... Hello everyone, Corey here and welcome to my channel. Definitely aged. Oh my god, I can definitely tell that this video was made 7 years ago. First off, holy crap, my hair was short. I am someone who is quite fussy with my hair. I like to have my hair relatively long. So whenever I watch this video, I'm always just surprised by just how short my hair is in this video. It's not a bad thing or anything, it's just something I find a bit amusing. And yes, I can pick apart every single problem I have with this video. Like the lighting, for example. This was my very first YouTube video, and this was my first attempt trying to use natural lighting. So what I did is that I had my curtains and blinds for my bedroom all the way open. There was just one problem. The window was to my right, which meant it was lining up one side of my face, and the other half of my face was in the dark. I've also said this in a previous video, but I also really, really wish I got rid of that fan, because it's distracting. But that's something I've done in 
one video and I immediately learned from it and I never did it again. I do, however, like the background. I had this Marvel Avengers poster hanging on my wall and I just had the gut instinct of filming in front of that poster. And I did so for pretty much the entirety of using Supersonic Corey. Even though I kind of wish I didn't use that really, really generic garage band music that sounds like it's being put through a filter and you can even hear somebody increasing the volume at the start of the video. I am a new YouTuber, and when I say I'm a new YouTuber, I mean this is literally my very first YouTube video ever. The only other really major thing about the video that really, really bugs me is the fact that the entire video is sped up. At the time, I was really, really self-conscious about audience time spans and how people will click off another video if it's too long. And so in this first video, I went in with the hardcore mindset that there was no way my video could ever possibly exceed the length of five minutes. There was no way it could be any more than five minutes. It had to be less than five minutes. And if you guys watched some of my most popular videos, you know, the videos that are over an hour long, you may have noticed that I've kind of stopped caring about that. I let the videos be however long I need them to be. And I really wish I left it. The video would have been completely fine if I just left it to be an extra minute long. So this was my very, very first YouTube video, which meant it was my introductory video. And I thought what better way to introduce my channel and me as a person by talking about 25 things about me. When I was 13, at that point in my life where I was going through tons upon tons of different phases, my personality was constantly changing, and I was trying to figure out who I was as a person. With that said, let's watch this video and see how many of these actually hold up, because quite a lot has changed since I made this video. Number one, my name is Corey. Okay, that one is still true. My name is still, in fact, Corey. I would not be calling this channel Corey's Reviews if it wasn't. Number two, I am currently 13 years old. Wow, I made this video a long time ago. I was 13 at the time I recorded this. I am now 21. Number three. I have a mother, father, older sister, and a dog named Bo. Obviously, all of this is still true. Except for the dog. Unfortunately, since I made this video, my dog that I had at the time, Bo, had unfortunately passed away. And we now have another dog named Leo who really, really, really likes to interrupt my videos. A few moments later. Leo? Quiet. Speaking of the devil. Number four. I am the youngest member of my family. Number five. I'm also the second tallest in my family. This is still true and something I find hilariously ironic that I am the youngest member of my family, and yet I am pretty much the tallest member of my family. For those who are curious about my height, I am six feet tall. Number six, I do not watch movies any higher than the rating of PG. I just made a video where I said the original Saw is one of my favorite horror movies of all time, so obviously that has definitely changed. Granted, I still don't watch R-rated movies very often. I often think they are a bit much for me. With a few exceptions, generally, MA15 Plus is the highest I go. Number seven, I'm actually not North American like a lot of you other guys are. I'm actually Australian. I don't know why I assumed most people in my audience were going to be North American, but yes, that's still true. I am still Australian, if you couldn't tell by my accent. Number eight, I'm clearly obsessed with Sonic the Hedgehog. This was definitely one of my phases. I still like some of Sonic the Hedgehog's games, but I definitely would not call myself a Sonic fan. Not anymore. Number nine, I suck at maths. This is still true. Anything outside of division or long complicated algorithms or minus a squared plus six, I, all of that is just, it's just rocket science to me. I cannot comprehend it and I don't think I ever will. I don't know how this is considered to be sixth grade material. But even standard maths, like doing long addition mentally, I can't do. If somebody was to walk up to me and say, hey Corey, what seven times eight? I'm going to stand there in complete silence, looking like a statue. 
And if I do manage to come up with the answer mentally, it's gonna take me an entire two minutes at least to find the answer. Number 10. I hate school assignments. Who doesn't? Number 11. I can be a very weird person sometimes. That, my friends, has not changed in the slightest. If anything, I've gotten weirder. Always look both ways before crossing the street. Number 12. I love the song The Final Countdown. At the time, The Final Countdown was my favourite song and I was playing it endlessly. And while it's still a great song, I wouldn't call it one of my favourites anymore. It's definitely a great song, but I do prefer other songs like Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer or You Give Love a Bad Name. And of course, I'm still going through my emo phase, so the music I'm really into now is stuff like Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana, I'll Sleep When I'm Dead by Set It Off, or just anything by My Chemical Romance. Number 13. I hate Raw by Katy Perry. This is no longer true either. I don't hate Katy Perry's Raw. It's not a bad song, it was just seriously overplayed at the time. It was constantly playing on radios 24-7 every single day. So it was less that I just hated the song outright, and it was more a case of I just got really, really sick of it. 14. I do not like cheese unless it's melted. As weird as it is, it's still true. I'm an unusually fussy eater, especially when it comes to stuff like cheese. I think a lot of it has to do with the texture. It has a different texture when it's melted compared to when you just get a standard slice of cheese out of the fridge. I hate the texture unless I melt it. I don't know, it's weird, but that's just what my tastes are like. Number 15. I can solve a Rubik's Cube in 5 minutes or less. While it's definitely nowhere close to the speed of those prodigies who can solve the thing in like 20 seconds, I can still solve a Rubik's Cube and can do it slightly faster now than I did at the time of making this video. At the time it took me about 5 minutes, now it generally takes me about 2 to a minute and a half, one minute if I'm really, really lucky. Number 16. I can memorize movie scripts off by heart. I do think this is somewhat exaggerated. Granted, I have no problem memorizing entire movie scenes and great chunks of movies. However, there are very, very few limited amount of movies where I can memorize the entire movie word for word from start to finish. There's a couple, but not many of them. Number 17. I do not have an iPhone of any sort. I only have an iPod Touch. Can you be quiet with the music? Sorry, couldn't resist. And that was my first joke, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, why do I begin with this one? At the time, I thought I'd reached a peak of comedy. I thought this was hilarious when I first made this joke. Because I was kind of like, oh wow, look, everybody's now assuming that everybody has a smartphone of sorts, which is kind of true. But I don't know, I don't think this joke particularly holds up very well. I don't find it as funny now as I did when I first made it. There are people out there who genuinely don't have smartphones. Having that said, I do still think it would have been funny if I went, I do not have an iPhone with the Beethoven thing that I was doing, and then I pulled out an Android instead. I think that would have been funny. Also, I have no idea why I pronounce music, music. Can you be quiet with the music? Can you be quiet with the music? Seriously, what was with the way I pronounced that? Why didn't I do another take? That just really, really annoys me. Number 18. I have terrible handwriting. This is still true. My muscles have this condition, there's a really, really long and technical term for it that I cannot remember to save my life, but it basically means that I am double jointed, and this includes in my fingers, so they're not quite as strong as other people my age. And that transitions into handwriting that looks like hieroglyphics from Lost. Number 19. I hate getting myself dirty in any way. Yeah, remember in my My Little Pony review where I criticised Rarity for being one of those characters who will absolutely panic if she gets mud on her? 
I'm gonna have to point out my hypocrisy and say that I'm pretty much exactly the same. If I get mud on my hand, I'm immediately running to the bathroom to go wash it. Number 20. Regular cow's milk gives me a runny nose, but this does not mean I am lactose tolerant. I'm pretty sure I'm meant to say lactose intolerant, but yes, this is still true. I do have a mild allergy to cow's milk. Number 21. I am an honest person. I rarely ever lie. I love how I deliberately avoided saying the word I never lie, because if you say you never lie, then you yourself are lying right now. All of us lie to some degree, but honesty is a really personal virtue that I hold, so I do often try to be honest. Number 22. When I was a younger kid, I used to be petrified of balloons. Obviously this is no longer true because I said the term used to, but yes, when I was a child, I was terrified of balloons. I absolutely hated them. I didn't like the texture and the way they feel when they are deflating. There was one time I almost had a panic attack when I grabbed the string of a helium balloon indoors and I made the mistake of walking underneath an air conditioner with it. And as a four-year-old, the result absolutely terrified me. But the real reason I absolutely hated balloons was because I had really, really sensitive ears when I was younger and so whenever I saw someone being rough with a balloon, I had this anxiety that it was going to burst because I hated the noise. It's a lot like in a horror movie when you're anticipating a jump scare and it's slowly building to that jump scare that may or may not end up coming. That's how balloons felt to me as a kid, so I hated them. Number 23. I can't sing. This I'm a bit 50-50 about. Singing is something that I'm practicing constantly because I really, really enjoy singing. I'm just not very good at it. We can leave this world all be mine. We can steal this car and go for some light. We can live forever if we've got the time. 24. I have a huge hobby in making movies. This is kind of still true. I do love the idea of making movies. However, I haven't really properly made one since I made one in middle school in 2015. And it's not very good. And finally, number 25. I have autism. Yes, this is obviously something I can't get rid of, but for those who don't really know, because I don't bring it up very often, I am in fact autistic. More on that a little bit later though. And that was my very first video. It's definitely aged, but I do think that for my very first video, I did quite a bit right. And my dog is walking behind the curtains. It's definitely aged, but I feel like that, considering I made this when I was 13, it could have been a lot worse. The second video I made are my favourite Pixar quotes. Not much to talk about in this one. I basically went through each Pixar movie and quoted some of my favourite moments. Although some of the quotes I chose were questionable in terms of how funny they were, and some of them were just flat out wrong. Always watching. Ooh, she gives me the creeps. Always watching. Ooh, she's nuts. One thing that really annoys me about the video, however, is the thumbnail. When I was trying to choose a thumbnail for the video, I really liked the image that I had found for it, but I had to bring it down to make room for the text where I put down my favourite, which meant there was this little black bar that I had to get rid of. And so I got the colour blue and tried my best to get it to be the same shade as the colour of the background I was actually using, but that really didn't work. You can tell that it's a different colour. And it really, really annoys me, especially since I know how to fix that now. So as an experiment, I tried to recreate that exact thumbnail using the same image, which I shouldn't have used in the first place because it was really pixelated and blurry. But I tried to recreate it by fixing that problem, and it was really, really easy. The next video I want to talk about is the third video I made, and my very first proper public movie review, The Lego Movie. I chose the Lego movie because it was the newest, most recent movie that I'd seen at the time. And the video... is okay. I feel like that this video was a step down in quality from the last one, purely because of one really poor decision I made. I decided to shoot it at night. I shot the video in the dark, which meant there was no natural lighting, 
and so I just used the light for my bedroom. And so that results in a video that's very orangey and very yellow. And it's just not nearly as pleasant to look at as my first video, despite the little error I had with having the window to one side of my face. Nowadays, I use proper lighting. I now have two ring lights that I have on either side of me pointing down in this direction. And so that makes the lighting a lot more even. That and I'm shooting in a room that has no windows. And so the lighting looks exactly the same no matter what time of day that I'm filming. I could be filming in the middle of the day or I could be filming at 3 o'clock in the morning and it has no effect on how my videos will look. But at the time, I did not have access to that kind of equipment. And so the best chance I had at that time was natural lighting. So having the lights off and using my bedroom light just really put a serious decline in quality in terms of the visuals of the video. The video itself, I think, was just okay. I made the mistake of not commenting on what the general movie was about, which is something I generally do in my modern videos. And you could tell I was new to reviewing movies and judging them because I didn't really know how to judge the story. Like, this is what I literally said about the movie. It's... the story, I guess? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I also commented on how this movie has a lot of parallels to other movies like The Matrix. And for some reason, The Matrix was my only example. Like, obviously there are going to be some parallels, both movies were made by Warner Brothers. So I commented on how Emmett was very similar to Neo, Wildstar was very similar to Trinity, Vitruvius had a parallel to Morpheus, and Bad Cop had a parallel to Agent Smith. However, I did nothing with this point. I brought it up. But I brought it up for no reason other than just to acknowledge that it exists. If I was reviewing the Lego movie today and I was to bring that up, I would bring it up to say that the movie was a parody of other movies that uses the chosen one trope. Although I do think that this moment right here was quite clever. I especially love how everything is made of Lego. I also feel like I contradicted myself a little bit because I said that I didn't really have any feelings on the story, but then later on in the video I said that the script was very well written. And then I made absolutely no effort to go into any detail on why the script was written. I just said that it was. I also said I didn't like the ending of the movie and I thought it was really, really stupid. But again, I didn't go into any detail as to why. Maybe that's why my videos are never this short. Because in my earlier reviews, since they're so short, I never go into any detail about why something is this or why I feel a certain way. I just say that they are. Which is something I think you really kind of have to do if you want your videos to be no longer than like five minutes. And I don't like doing that. I like elaborating on why I feel a certain way. And that's probably why pretty much all of my modern reviews will always at the very least exceed the 10 minute length. My next couple of videos were quite similar in quality. I reviewed the really random family movie Hotel for Dogs, which is my most popular review on that channel for whatever reason. I do like that I stopped shooting my videos at night. I did go back to filming my videos during the day, and I'm glad I did. It looks a lot better. But in terms of the reviews themselves, I don't really make any better points. When we got to my very first review for Inside Out, the only really thing I really felt the need to comment on was how I had to change the layout of my room, which meant I couldn't film in the same area that I was filming in before. So I started shooting my videos where I am sitting on my bed. And how that resorted to was having the camera really, really close to my face. Imagine if I was still making videos like this to this day where I am this close to the camera. This is driving me insane. This wouldn't be too much of a problem if it wasn't for the fact that I'm constantly moving my head back and forth like a bloody bobblehead. I did it again in my next review for Terminator Genesis. Terminator Jenny Cease. Jenny Swiss. Jenny Swiss. Terminator Genesis Swiss Cheese. As annoying as the bobblehead effect is, I will say that I do think that this review is a bit of a step up in terms of what I have to say in the review. This feels like the first proper review where I go into a little bit more detail as to why. I said that the movie was really, really fun, and I enjoyed the action, however, I had a lot of problems with it. The first issue is that I thought the action was really, really underwhelming, but I thought one of the reasons as to why was because pretty much every single action set piece were in the trailers. In fact, about half of the review 
was me talking about why the trailers were so heavy on the spoilers and why the trailers were just really, really terrible. It had really, really terrible marketing. I also talked about how the plot of the movie was incredibly jarring because it feels like that it switches the story every 10 minutes throughout the first act of the movie. And then when they finally sit on a story, it goes in a direction that I just really didn't like. So overall, aside from sitting way too close to the camera, I like my review for Terminator Genesis. I feel like I hit a lot of points and I don't know whether or not I'd redo it if I got the chance to review it again because I have very similar thoughts on it now. Not gonna lie, out of pretty much all of my reviews on my Supersonic Corey channel, this one I feel like has possibly aged the best. I did a video where I ranked the Pixar movies where I used the same stock music that Matthew Santoro was infamous for using. Yeah, probably shouldn't have used that specific track. I did a second favorite Pixar quotes video, I reviewed the original Terminator, and then I did a video on- Oh god, no, not this video, not this one, no, please, not this one, just, no. This is a video I made on my Supersonic Corey channel called, What's the Perfect Inside Out Sequel? What's the Perfect Inside Out Sequel is the perfect example of why Pixar doesn't hire 15 year olds to write their screenplays. Because this was probably one of the worst videos I have ever released to YouTube. It is bad. Before I rip this video a new one, I will say that I do like the editing and presentation style of the video. I like how it's a simple white background with PNGs and JPEGs zooming in and out. I just like the way I edited this video. For the most part. Hi, my name is Supersonic Corey, and your left ear is really going to enjoy this video. Yeah, this was a pretty major screw up on my part. You can only hear through the left speaker. And this is an issue that lasts for the entire video. But the writing, oh my god, the writing. I mean, the video opens up with a warning talking about how the video is going to contain spoilers and it's pretty straightforward here. I spelled avoid wrong! And it only gets worse from there. I love how I opened the video talking about how there's going to be major spoilers for Inside Out and assume you've already seen it and then proceed to spend the next three minutes of the video summarizing the movie from beginning to end as if you hadn't already seen it. The gist of the video is that I didn't want it to be a rehash of the original movie, and I just wanted it to be a continuation of the story that's already been established. And the best way I was able to demonstrate this was by writing a brief screenplay that was basically the exact same movie as the first movie. Take the first movie and have it written by a 15 year old in a first draft, and you've got the story I came up with for what's the perfect Inside Out sequel. If they actually made this into the official Inside Out sequel, the movie would absolutely suck. I did a favourite Back to the Future quotes video, which hasn't aged very well, but it only exists because I wanted something Back to the Future related to celebrate October 21st, 2015. I did a Star Wars marathon that I actually Finished? That's a rarity on my channel. And I did a third favorite Pixar quotes video where I used a laugh track. Um, it's empty. See? Hello. Ah! <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Why? The laugh track was a really, really terrible idea. It's basically dumbing down my audience and basically me trying to tell them when they're supposed to laugh. Also, comedy is completely subjective. I like to crack jokes in my videos, but I truly accept that not everybody's gonna find my comedy funny. And so I'm just going to crack jokes in my videos and hope that some people will get a laugh out of it. The next couple of videos I did was me showing a couple of music covers that I did from the original Sonic the Hedgehog game. I did a cover for Green Hill Zone and Marble Zone. These were both done entirely off by ear, so I didn't use any tutorials, read any sheet music. I just used my ear and worked it out by listening to it, and I used nothing but MIDI data and loops. And I don't think they have aged very well. I admire their ambition, and I do still enjoy listening to them now, but more in the case of I think it's fun to see how much I've improved on seeing how it sounded when I tried to make it then. Compared to 
how it sounds when I try to do it now. Before I move on to the next and final video for Supersonic Cory, there is one really major event that happened on Supersonic Cory that I really need to talk about because it's pretty important to how my channel has evolved. The Rubik's Cube videos. When I started Supersonic Cory, I had recently at the time just learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube and I was really, really excited and really proud of myself. And I still kind of am, while I'm definitely not a speed cuber by any means, I'm still proud of the fact that I can actually solve the damn thing, because I know how hard it is to learn. From an outsider of somebody who doesn't even know where to begin, it's utterly perplexing to see somebody who can solve Rubik's Cube with absolutely no issue, even if it does take me about a minute to do it. But to this day, whenever I tell new people that I know how to solve them, Generally, the response is, Wait, you can solve the Rubik's Cube? Holy crap, that's amazing! And that's just something I really wanted to share with other people. So, I started doing videos where I basically show off that, Hey, I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. But in doing that, I unintentionally encountered one of the most toxic and unkind communities that isn't dead by daylight. The cubing community. Now, I'm not going to say that this applies to the whole cubic community as a whole. I'm sure that there are plenty of really nice, welcoming, warm, kind, and incredibly talented people in this community, and I wouldn't even be surprised if that was the majority of people in the cubing community. These were not the people that saw my video. If I had to name one reason why I really don't like the cubing community, it's this serious gatekeeping. A great chunk of the comments I got in the videos where I'm solving the 3x3 or the 4x4 were basically people criticizing me just because I was really, really slow at it. People acting like that they were superior or better than me just because they could solve a Rubik's Cube 20 seconds faster than I could. And honestly, I don't care that I can't solve a Rubik's Cube in 5 seconds. I'm just excited that I can solve the thing at all. But it's almost like people are trying to discourage you from being in the community or act like you're not a real cuber just because you take over a minute to solve it. And then, the straw that broke the camel's back. The one video I did that kind of was the whole catalyst on why I changed channels in the first place. 15 things non-cubers say. Yeah, some of you long-time subscribers will know this video. About halfway through my span of having Supersonic Cory, I did a video called 15 Things non cubers Say, where I talk about some of the most common things said to me by people who didn't know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. The video wasn't intended to be mean-spirited or anything, it was just kind of poking fun at the fact that I was hearing the same thing by different people over and over again. Because you surprisingly hear the same stuff being said multiple times by different people, and I just thought that was highly amusing. I talked about some of the typical stuff about how they are really, really easy to impress, people who act like the Rubik's Cube is really, really easy, and then they try solving it for five minutes, and then they give up because they think it's too hard. All the people that I've seen where I show them the 4x4, and they go, Oh my god, what the hell is that? There was one comment I make about how a lot of people call non-Rubik's branded Rubik's Cubes, Rubik's. That one in particular, people got really, really defensive about in the comments, talking about how it's still technically a Rubik's Cube because it's by Rubik's, because Rubik's is the guy who invented it. And that's kind of true, but also not true. Because Rubik's, at the end of the day, is still the name of the brand. It is not the actual cube itself. It's the brand that makes them. So when you look at a brand that isn't Rubik's that's making them, that's not a Rubik's Cube. I get why people do it, because when you get to something like a Diane Zanshi, it's just easier to say a Rubik's Cube. But calling non-Rubik's brand a Rubik's Cube is like calling any animated movie a Pixar movie, or calling an Android an iPhone. You can, but it's wrong. Anyway, the reason I bring up this specific video is because I completely lost control of it, because it is the only video I ever made that got as many views as it did. My average view count is about somewhere in the hundreds, maybe somewhere in the thousands if I'm really, really lucky. 15 Things Non-Cubers Say got as high as about 80,000 views 
before I took it down. And as it got so many views, it got some really critical and outright nasty comments basically calling me an asshole. The video was made in good fun, and most of the non cupers that saw it said that they did find it really, really funny because there's a lot of truth to it. However, a lot of the cubing veterans, ironically, got really, really angry on their behalf and thought that I was just being really, really mean-spirited. I wasn't trying to be, it wasn't intended to be mean-spirited, but I can definitely see why people took it that way. But not only did the video get a lot of really, really nasty comments, there were also a lot of people who absolutely loved the video. A video that had over 80,000 views. And that was, in some ways, just as bad. Because the main focus I wanted to make on my channel was entirely about movies. I wanted to, first and foremost, be a movie-themed channel. But most of the people who were now watching my content were people who liked cubing videos. And I figured the only way to get away from all that was by starting a completely brand new channel. And thus, I started Corey's Reviews. And that brings us to when I started this channel. And this channel I'm finding quite interesting considering how often it's undergone multiple changes. And I think that's mostly apparent due to how frequently I changed my background. When I first started this channel, I kind of tried to replicate the original way I was filming videos before I published them sitting in my chair in the middle of the room and just having the wall at a weird angle, but I kind of unintentionally had it tidier than I did in the original version, where I sat further from the camera and I was sitting right in the corner of the wall. And I'm glad that it looks like that. I would not try to replicate what I was doing then because it just didn't look nearly as professional then as what I'm doing now. However, when it comes to my first few videos on this channel, there's something about the background that really, really bothers me. And I think it even bothered me at the time, considering I quickly did something about it. And that's the fact that the walls in the first couple of videos are barely, if at all, decorated. I mean, in the first couple of videos, you can kind of see that you have some hints of a poster in the background that are really, really tiny, but it just didn't look that good. The first video I did on this channel was my review for Mad Max Fury Road. And I can't comment on anything I said about the movie in that review because, honestly, I cannot, for the life of me, remember what I said in that review because I didn't watch it before making this video. I didn't have time to go through and watch every single one of my videos I made before this video. But considering this is a review I did five years ago, I have a feeling that a review for it now would be completely different. One video I do want to talk about though is the second video I did on this channel, my review for the original Sonic the Hedgehog released in 1991 for the Sega Genesis. I said some interesting things about this game. In that review, I said one of my biggest problems with the game was that I thought it was too difficult for a first game in the series. Because at that age, I had this logic that in a series, a game should get progressively harder with each installment. Why did I have this logic? I have absolutely no clue. If I was to review the original Sonic the Hedgehog again, I have a feeling I would be giving it a much more positive review because I have a deeper appreciation for it now than I did when I first reviewed it at the time. The next major video that I really want to discuss and the only reason I'm bringing it up is because for some reason it's like the most popular video on my channel, Battle of the Flicks, Jumanji vs. Sathora. Why? Why is everybody watching that video? It's not that good! I mean, I immediately dislike the video because I reference CinemaSins, one of my least favourite YouTubers on the entire website. I think the reason why people really gravitated towards the video is my extremely unoriginal concept of taking two movies that have something in common with each other and comparing the two to see which one is the better movie. And if I was to do a video like that today, which I don't really have much of an interest in, I don't think I would use that same approach. I would most definitely not be going category by category like I did in that video. These days I would probably take the two similar movies and look at how they both approach them in different ways. For this example, Jumanji and Sathora. To be honest, I still really like both of these movies. Sathora is so much better than people give it credit for. They're two very similar movies, but they also have two very different themes. Jungles and space. 
and they both have their strengths and weaknesses. So I will talk about how Jumanji does certain things one way, and Sathura does other things another way. And of course, if I really did feel like one was significantly better than the other, I would spend the entire video explaining why, going point by point, rather than making it a contest and trying to make it as much of a tie as possible. And at the end of the day, if I was to make the video again and I had to pick a winner, I most definitely would pick Jumanji. I don't really know why I picked Sathura as the winner when I originally made that video, but yeah, Jumanji is the better movie. But that's not to say that Sathura doesn't have any credit, and it is still worth watching. I do like Sathura more than both of the Jumanji sequels, Welcome to the Jungle, and The Next Level. I prefer Sathura to both of those movies any day. When we get to my next few videos, like my reviews for The Good Dinosaur, or Alexander and the Terrible Horrible No Good Very Bad Day, you can tell that now there's officially nothing on my wall. And it makes my videos really unpleasant to look at because you're just looking at these plain white naked walls. It feels like a prison and it's not nearly as appealing to look at. Eventually around 2016, I got posters for Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol and Inside Out. And I added them to my background. And it immediately makes my videos look so much better. I also noticed that I kind of experimented a lot with the camera in this era. I experimented quite a lot with how close and far away I was from the camera. In this era, I was also experimenting a lot with the sound quality. There were times where I was using a microphone built directly into my camera, and there were times where I was using a USB microphone that was plugged into my computer, running through a music software I had at the time called Mixcraft. It sort of improved my sound a little bit, but there were two major problems I had. Well, technically three. The first was the fact that it was an absolute nuisance to set up because it was a tiny USB microphone that was supposed to sit on a desk. And I was standing in the middle of my room. So I ended up getting a bunch of tow trays and boxes and stacked them all up in the middle of my bedroom as a tower and sat my USB microphone on there and I spoke into it and I was still relatively far away from it where it was really designed for you to be speaking directly into it. But it was out of the shot which did affect the audio quality of those videos. Which was the second problem, I was just too far away from the microphone. And the third problem, and I'm not sure if this was the age of the software I was using, or if this was the limitations on my laptop at the time, but every so often the audio would just clip through my audio, and so there would be a lot of times where it sounds like I skipped a word, or there's like a little jump, and it happened too frequently for me to use it reliably. So I stopped using it and I went back to using the microphone in my camera, which I'm still using to this day. I really need to fix that. Seriously, if I could only improve one more thing about my modern videos, it would be my audio quality. I need to stop using the microphone for my camera. But at the moment, it's just my most convenient solution. But I'm hoping to eventually improve it with like maybe a lapel mic or something to that end. In terms of the content themselves in this era, there is one thing that really, really irks me though. And this isn't really something I can really help because I'm quite positive this is in fact an autism thing. But in this era, I rambled way too much. You see, one struggle that I'm constantly having with autism is that for some reason, I always pick the long way to say something. This is something that I've kind of touched upon earlier, like the very first few videos I made. And this is an example of that problem. You could take something that someone could say in a single sentence and I'll find a way to say an entire paragraph or three paragraphs to say that same thing and make the same point that somebody else can make in one sentence. I don't know why I struggle with this, but it's a big problem for me. And I think in this era of my YouTube channel, it really, really shows. One example is my second Q&A, because I answer one question that I could have answered in a couple of sentences, but I just go on huge tangents and I just go on and on and on and on. I like to think that these days I'm a little bit better at trying to be a bit more concise and my videos are as long as they are, not because I'm going on one massive tangent about one specific point, but I'm making a lot of smaller points, but I just have a lot more to say. Or maybe I'm still going on tangents and I just have never improved. But that's a really serious struggle that I have with autism 
and it affects me in my daily life just as much as it affects me on YouTube. It's so bad that even in my modern videos, I've caught myself going on tangents and I've cut out massive chunks of videos that I feel like I didn't need because it just doesn't add to the point and the video would have been an extra 10 minutes if I kept it in. I even did this in my No Way Home review. In fact, I'm probably going to get into editing this video and feel like that this in itself is a massive tangent. The last review I did in this era was when I reviewed Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which I don't think has aged really well. Then I did an unboxing for the Blu-ray for Zootopia. However, one thing that happened behind the scenes during these videos, like during the Zootopia unboxing video, was that I was switching bedrooms around the times of making this particular video. It was in the same house, but as I was transitioning from one bedroom to another, that meant I had to completely overhaul my setup including my lighting. And this is probably the darkest age of my entire channel. In terms of content and stuff that I'm saying, it's not nearly as bad as what's the perfect Inside Out sequel, but visually, I decided that I wanted to take a step up with my lighting. I was sick of using natural lighting. I was sick of using the window, and my father tried to help me come up with a solution. The key word here is try. You see, my father is a musician, and whenever he's doing gigs, he quite frequently brings lights with him. And so he had a couple of spare backup lights that he thought that I could use for my channel. These lights got really, really hot, so he had to sit them on a plank of wood that I sat on the floor, and they were very, very bright, and very, very yellow. And so to protect my eyes, I could not look directly into them, otherwise I'd be blind. So I decided to sit them on the floor on this plank of wood and I pointed them directly up and again, they were very, very bright. Which meant the next few videos I made looks like this. When I was filming the first video with this new setup, I thought I was really taking a step up with this new lighting game, but pretty much everyone in the comments told me otherwise. Seriously, I don't think I got a single positive comment about the lighting in these videos, and I don't blame them. They look horrendous. Since the lights are so bright, and since they were on the floor pointing directly up at me, it was casting a lot of shadows that were going all over my face, all over my shoulders, because I used my arms to emote a lot. It doesn't even matter what I said in any of these videos. No one probably really notices what I say in these videos, because the lighting in these videos are just so horrendous. So after like making five of these videos with this setup, I basically went, Dad, we need to do something about my lighting. It's not working. So the solution he came up with was coming up with some baking paper and sliding them over the light, which immediately seriously defused the light. And it was nowhere near as shadowy or harsh on the eyes and it immediately looked a lot better. The other thing he did to help me improve the lighting for these videos was that he attached these lights to a pole so that they were now eye level instead of being on the floor looking up at me. And I still don't think they look very good because they are still way too orange and yellowy. It still looks the same way as if I was shooting these videos at night, which I often was. I apparently didn't learn that in 2016. I feel like there was still a lot of work to be done. So when I turned 16, my father gave me a proper lighting system. It came with this green screen that was an absolute nuisance to set up and I never really got used to how it worked. But I used the living hell out of that lighting kit because it was big, it was a big professional lighting system. So I had these massive bulbs on, it was protected by this silver silk-like film and it made my videos look so much better. The colour looked a lot more natural, and then from that point onward, it was a matter of just kind of experimenting with my editing to try and get it from looking like this to looking like this. So this was the point where I started experimenting a lot with colour contrast and colour saturation to really get the look I want. At this era, I was also really happy with the background I had, basically filming in front of my posters head on instead of having them in a corner, and I just really liked the look of that setup that I unfortunately had to get rid of because I moved house. So, much to my dismay, I had to get rid of those posters. So, I experimented with then filming in front of this mesh thing that I had in front of my studio, 
And then, you know, they started to fall off the wall. So my dad and I came up with another setup using this curtain instead. But unfortunately, I had to get rid of my posters because we just didn't have the space for it. So I just had to be content with using this curtain. And that leads me to my modern videos and the kind of videos that I'm making today. You may have noticed that just as often as doing movie reviews, I'm now doing stuff like top 10 lists since I did a video on my top 10 personal favorite horror movies, which is one of my favorite videos that I've done recently. And I also did a video where I ranked the Spider-Man movies and then immediately changed my mind right after making that video. And despite the fact that I spent quite a while making the video, not once did it occur to me that I should probably have waited for No Way Home before ranking the Spider-Man movies. What was I thinking? But that was basically me trying to diversify my channel a little bit. And that kind of leads into this really big announcement that I wanted to make. For the last couple of years, despite all these errors I've gone through, there's one thing a lot of long-term subscribers will be very, very familiar with. My upload schedule is absolutely atrocious. For the last several years now, I've been going on and off making videos and I've often gone months upon months without making a single video. Even if you're watching this video like two years into the future, if you look at my upload schedule from around this point in time, you will notice that my videos were being released like six months apart. And it took me a lot of soul searching after the last couple of years to really try to work out why this was the case. And I think there were a few factors. At first I thought it was just me being really, really busy, but I think there's a lot more to it than that considering there are other people who have full-time jobs, yet they manage to still make videos on a weekly basis. So I really don't think that was the issue. To be completely real with you guys, I think one thing that did play a role in it is that over the last couple of years, I had gone through a couple of episodes of very mild depression. Fortunately, I'm getting a lot better. I feel like my mental health is a lot better now than it has been over the last couple of years. But I do think around that time period, my motivation to make videos absolutely tanked. I'm pretty sure this had quite a bit to do with it because this was around the point where I was only making one or two videos per year because I loved the idea of maintaining my channel, but the motivation to put in the work around that period, I wasn't in my best place at the time. Again, I'm getting a lot better, I'm working through my problems, and I definitely think my mental health is better now than it was back then, which is why I'm uploading videos a little bit more frequently than I have been in the past, but it's still pretty terrible. And that's because of the third and the biggest thing that I probably have the most control over. Movies aren't as high of a priority to me as they used to be. Now I can say with confidence that my passion in movies is not going to be like my cubing phase. I'm not going to be dismissing movies altogether. But I've come to realize I don't want my channel to just be about movies anymore. Back in like 2016, that's all I wanted to talk about. I was obsessed with movies, I really wanted to be a film director, but nowadays, I have a lot of other hobbies that I am just as passionate about. Remember how I said I recently updated my Green Hill cover in GarageBand? This is something I did entirely on my iOS iPhone in GarageBand with MIDI files. And I'm really proud of how it sounds. And that's not the only one I've made, I have done a lot. Naturally, I've done a bunch of covers using the same method to recreate songs by My Chemical Romance. I once tried to cover the remix of Five Nights at Freddy's by The Living Tombstone. And very, very recently, I made this. Again, this was done almost entirely by ear, done on my phone, 
using nothing but MIDI files on GarageBand iOS. Yeah, I think this is kind of starting to explain why I'm not uploading videos nearly as frequently. Because whenever I'm not making videos, I'm making stuff like that. And when I'm not doing something like that, I'm focusing on something else that I am just as passionate about. The drums. I've made a couple of jokes and gags and very, very briefly in passing have mentioned that I like the idea of playing the drums. However, I never really emphasised just how seriously I'm taking it. I've been learning how to play the drums for about three and a half years now, and I'm not great at it, but I'm really proud of how far I've come, considering I'm getting really close to being able to play up to speed, Toxicity by System of a Down. And I've gotten good enough that I kind of want to share it with you guys. I want to show that I can play the drums and I want to start doing drum covers on my channel. And I'm not talking about songs that are specifically from movies. I'm talking about doing drum covers of just music in general. Do be aware that I'm going to mostly play drums in songs that I'm really, really into, which are mostly hard rock, occasionally soft metal but I really want to start doing drum covers on this channel. So that's something I really want to start doing. I have recently mastered Chop Suey by System of a Down, which will probably be one of, if not the first song that I do on this channel. And I'm currently learning other songs, like I'll Sleep When I'm Dead by Set It Off. But the biggest one that I really want to branch out more into is just me as a person, especially about my autism. Like I said earlier in this video, my autism isn't something that I've tried to hide on this channel. I've been quite transparent about it and I've mentioned it in multiple videos in the past. However, I've never discussed it in detail because it's never been relevant. And I'm kind of getting sick of not talking about it because I have a lot to say about it. There's a lot of misconceptions about autism and what it's like to live with it. And as someone who has autism, I want to start talking about it. I will admit that since it's such a broad subject, I'm not terribly sure where to start, but one of my biggest video ideas on the subject matter is talking about autism representation in media. The catalyst for this was watching music by Sia. And let's just say I have some very, very strong feelings towards that movie. It's not good. Let's just say that. So what does this mean for the future of my channel? The main takeaway I want you guys to have for this video is that I'm going to be spicing up my videos a lot. I want to be more open and honest about my autism. I want to start doing drum covers. I want to do occasional stupid comedy sketches, whether they're originals or recreations of my favorite scenes from movies. And of course, I will still be talking about movies. I won't even be surprised if it's still the main thing I do on this channel. But the big thing that is changing is that I don't want it to be the only thing I do on this channel anymore. In fact, since I really want the channel to be more about me as a person than rather when I'm talking about the next Avengers movie, I'm seriously considering changing my channel name from Corey's Reviews to my legal name, Corey Doyle because at that point the channel will be more about me than it will be about movies. For this entire time, I haven't shared my last name because I've naturally been a very, very private person. However, if I'm going to be taking these serious measures on my channel to really make it more about me as a person, it just feels weird to not do it. I haven't decided for sure, but I'm very seriously considering doing that. 
So, the main thing that you should take away is that I will still be doing the stuff that I've already been doing before. I'm just going to be doing other things on this channel as well. So don't worry, my movie reviews, they're not going away. I'm still going to be doing them. There's just some other things I want to do as well. And that brings us to the end of my 100th video. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned till my next video. But until then, see you later.